Hello, I'm Nathan Williamson, Navy Veteran and Deputy Director for Transition and Economic Development at the Veterans Benefits Administration. I'd like to welcome you to Transition Talk. Transition Talk is your resource for trusted and relevant information related to how the COVID-19 pandemic is affecting the transition to civilian life for America's military families. Today, I am pleased to be joined by VA Principal Deputy Undersecretary for Benefits, Ms. Margarita Devlin. Ms. Devlin is not only a member of a military family herself, she is a tireless and trusted advocate on military to civilian transitions. And thanks to her leadership, we are able to continue to support the transitioning military family through this pandemic. Ms. Devlin, welcome. Thank you, Nathan. It's my pleasure to be here. Ma'am, uh, you know, we are currently uh, sheltering in place at VBA, uh, hence why we're doing this from our own homes today. Um, and I'd like to thank my daughter, Amelia, for giving me her marker board to be able to facilitate this while we're at home. But a lot of folks in America are doing the same thing. And they're probably concerned about VA's ability to continue to serve them during this time. Do you have any information you'd like to share with transitioning military families on how we can serve them while we are sheltering in place or social distancing? Yes, absolutely. It is uh, really important for me to share with our military families, service members, and veterans how VA is continuing to engage and make sure that we are continuing to service them. Uh, while our offices in VBA are not currently open to the public for the protection of both our veterans and our employees, we are all working. Our employees are working from home. They are processing claims. Um, in the voc rehab world, we're doing telehealth, using telehealth technology for counseling appointments. In the healthcare space, we're using telehealth technology for mental health and routine medical appointments. So we are here, the VA is open for business and we are taking care of veterans. You know, there's a lot of resources out there and I'd like to first start what VA resources are available to those who may have some financial difficulties related to the current economy. And then if you uh, know of any other resources that might be uh, provided at the state level that uh, transitioning uh, service members and their families may be aware of. During this time of the pandemic, clearly there are lots of financial stressors on many individuals. Um, veterans may be interested in filing for disability compensation um, for any disabilities or injuries that might have been incurred while in service. And if we can grant those benefits, and sometimes we can even without the ability to do an in-person exam, we can go ahead and make those decisions. And if we can grant you the benefit, we can get that started for you right away. Um, also, we have a vocational rehabilitation and employment program for individuals with service-connected disabilities who need to return to the workforce eventually. And there are some financial assistance that can be provided once we enroll you in a program provided that you need retraining. With respect to other services that might be available, um, service members who leave the military and are unemployed may be eligible for unemployment compensation. So I would encourage those veterans when they've separated from the military to look for the, uh, for the ability to apply for unemployment compensation. That is administered by the states. We're going to give you a URL here on the screen to help you navigate how to apply for unemployment compensation. Um, and also the state departments of veterans affairs, which are different than the federal department of veterans affairs. Um, the states may be able to offer you additional financial assistance and we will give you that URL so that you can access the state benefits for your state. You say we're open for business, ma'am. Uh, and, and for those who are transitioning, well, we're getting a lot of questions from family members about our ability to continue to service them as they go through transition, uh, their ability to be able to go through the transition assistance program. Uh, could you elaborate on uh, what this virtual environment means for those as they go through TAP? Absolutely. So for transitioning service members, they typically would go to an in-person TAP class uh, with other transitioning service members and we would provide them with a full day of interactive classroom experience. And we also have benefit advisors who are available for one-on-one -on -one assistance outside of the classroom. In this current environment, what we've done is we've enabled the online version of this class to be available for everybody, basically, all transitioning service members. It's available on the JKO, or Joint Knowledge Online Portal in DOD. And I would tell you that in this environment where everybody's at home and, and practicing social isolation, I would encourage service members to include their spouses or uh, other important people in their lives, their parents, their siblings, 
whoever else they might want to include and do the online course with them present. It might produce some, some engaging conversations um, around how to make sure that you take the best advantage of your benefits. The online course that VA has created for TAP was originally intended for those operationally deployed uh, in, in, in theater of operations. Uh, can the family member uh, have access to that same material so they can do this as a family? Yes, indeed. Um, the family member can access the portal. Uh, you can get a uh, view only access to the portal. But I would encourage you to view this uh, with with your service member present if you if you can if you're both in the same location and if not then absolutely you can view it separately and and have conversations about benefits. I find that sometimes our transitioning service members um, don't even realize that they're really going to be veterans when they leave the military and provided that they have other than a dishonorable discharge they will be entitled to a really robust suite of benefits and I want to make sure that every transitioning service members aware of those benefits and can take advantage of them. You know, on, on that, ma'am, when a, when a member gets out, uh, that, that day of discharge, uh, in normal circumstances, VA has reported on transition stress. Um, it's got to be exacerbated during this time when we are in this uncertain economy and uh, environment. Uh, what, what is VA going to, uh, to maintain that relationship once folks do get out? Right, that first year after separation can be very stressful for the service member and their family. And quite often it's, it's hard to really understand what that year is going to feel like for the person until they're going through it. So uh, what VA has done to make sure we're touching base with those newly minted veterans, if you will, after their separation from the military is we implemented in December a program called Solid Start. And the thinking behind Solid Start is that because that first year is, is so stressful, VA is initiating through trained VA representatives contact with those veterans at uh, three months, basically after transition, to make sure we check in with them and make sure that they're aware of their benefits. And we can, during those phone calls, connect that veteran to whatever services they might need. And those conversations are very much tailored to the individual's need. So whatever that veteran might be going through or might need, we tailor the conversation and the resources to those specific needs at that point. And then we follow it up with an email to share those resources by email with the veteran um, and provide our phone number for them to call that uh, VA representative back if they need to. And then we touch base again at six months and at one year after separation. So I feel like that program is absolutely critical right now, given what we're going through. And we've adapted the uh, resources that those VA representatives have to make sure that they are relevant for today's environment. And if uh, we want to learn more as a, uh, as a transitioning uh, military family about this Solar Start program, uh, any, any uh, recommendations on where we find out more information? There's a VA benefits website that has all of our transition resources. We're gonna give that website URL to you here on the screen so you can jot it down and come visit us online anytime. So in, uh, you, you always reiterate this point uh, during uh, your, your public remarks that transition does not end on the day of separation, that it continues into that first year. Um, what, what message uh, related to GI Bill benefits would you have to someone who is already a veteran and utilizing this uh, with regards to their VAH rates and concerns that they may have uh, during this time? VA is committed to make sure we continue to take care of our student veterans. Student veterans will not have an interruption in their BAH payments while they continue in school, even if their training program has been converted to online, as most of them have. So I would encourage student veterans to continue doing what they're doing, stay in touch with your school, and if you have a personal situation that you need some help with, please give us a call. Our number for education benefits is 1-888-GI-BILL-1. Related to, and, and for those with a service-connected disability, vocational rehabilitation and employment. Uh, do you have any updates as to uh, how that's progressing during this situation? I do. So our vocational rehabilitation counselors are teleworking and they have access to telehealth technology. So if you are already enrolled in the VRNE program, rest assured that your counselor is available to you. You can contact them by phone and they can set up either a telephone appointment or a video appointment, whatever is most convenient for you. If you have not yet enrolled and you have a connected disability or you're in the process of transitioning out and you believe you will have a service-connected disability, go ahead and fill out an application online at va.gov and our counselors will reach out to you to determine your eligibility and start helping you navigate that process. 
And uh, on that, ma'am, we, we get a lot of questions from uh, concerned family members through partner agencies, such as Blue Star Families. And one of the questions that uh, Blue Star Families has uh, brought to our attention is concern on being able to file for disability compensation or other VA benefits during this time. Uh, how, how will we go through if you need to go through a CMP exam or, or other means to file your claim during this situation? So filing your claim during this time of social distancing, um, I would encourage you to still file. Like I said earlier, we are still looking for business and we're processing claims. A couple of things to keep in mind. Typically we would say you can come into one of our regional offices and we'll help you in person. That's not an option right now, but if you go to va.gov, you can apply for your benefits online. You can apply for disability compensation. What we will do is we will take a look at the military service treatment records if we have them, we will look at your VA medical records if we, if we have them on file for you. And if we believe that we need to conduct an exam to help determine your eligibility, we can do some of those exams uh, through telehealth technology. And some of the exams are really just what we call acceptable clinical evidence reviews, where if we have medical evidence in your file, but we just need a medical professional to maybe reach out to you to ask a couple of questions or to provide us with a medical opinion, we can do that as well. So with all of those things in mind, we may be able to process your claim all the way to completion and issue you a decision on that disability claim. In the event that we can decide part of your claim and not the rest of it, because we can't do in-person exams right now, we will decide the parts that we can because if we can grant any part of your benefit and start getting those payments coming to you, we will do that. And then we will hold in abeyance the rest of it so that we can finish your claim after we can do the in-person exams again. And if uh, social distancing and uh, shelter in place is uh, preventing or delaying me from collecting the evidence for a claim, is there anything VBA is doing to assist veterans in that situation? Yes, one of the things that we have at our disposal is the ability to, um, to extend the dates that you would normally have, for example, to file an appeal or to request an administrative review of a decision or simply to provide additional evidence. Typically, there are timelines set for these things, and once that timeline is up, it's up. But with uh, the, the legal um, authorities available to us, we can extend those time limits. And you don't even have to ask um, if your claim was filed or you had a due date after March 1st, we will automatically apply the extensions so that that gives you time to develop your evidence. If you have not filed a claim yet, and maybe you feel like, you'd really rather put together some information before you file your claim, you can do what's called intent to file, or we call it ITF. You can go online or you can call us at 1-800-827-1000, and we can right over the phone, take your intent to file, put it in the system. And what that does is it protects your effective date so that when later on we'll be able to make a decision, if we grant your disability claim, we can go back to that original date of your intent to file if we can issue you any re retroactive benefits. And as Ms. Devlin said, uh, that number is 1-800-827-1000 on the screen for those who would like to call us. Um, you know, speaking of calling and, and, and talking to somebody, transition is inherently stressful, uh, but this time is uh, inherently stressful through social distancing. Um, for, for those who just may need to reach out and, and talk to somebody, uh, does VA have uh, resources uh, available uh, to, to help out with anything that might be related to, uh, to mental health or uh, transition stress during this time? Absolutely. So first of all, I want to make sure we can give you the crisis line number. So we're going to put that on the screen. If you are in any way um, needing to talk to somebody, please don't hesitate to call the VA crisis line. We are there for you 24 seven and we have trained representatives there who can walk you through whatever's going on in your life right now. This is a stressful time. Don't be afraid to ask for help. We are here for you. And they can also help you to get an in-person appointment for mental health or a telehealth appointment for mental health so that you can get services right away. Amen. And we're uh, coming to the end of our time here. Uh, but as we mentioned earlier, you are a member of a military family. And, and as such, uh, what advice or, or thoughts would you like to impart on, on those who may be going through this transition time right now uh, from, from your personal perspective? You know, I guess the thing I would say is uh, you, you don't really realize how stressful the transition is going to be until you're experiencing it. 
Um, but one of the things I want to encourage families and servicemen and women to consider is that it's really, um, you shouldn't be afraid to ask for help. And, uh, and honestly, in the military, I understand the stoic culture, it's so important. Um, but once you become a veteran, the VA is there for you. We are now a part of your family and we want to be there to help you. That's why we started the Solid Start program so that we could reach out to you and start establishing that relationship and that, and that trust. Um, I would encourage you, if you're a service member watching this, to include your family in conversations about benefits Include your family in conversations about how you can return to work or access colleges or educations, uh, other education options such as apprenticeship. Everybody doesn't need to fit into the same mold. There's different paths that everybody can take, and we are there for you regardless of the path that you think you would like to take. Or if you have absolutely no idea where to begin, reach out to us because we can connect you with a professional who can walk you through all the options and really kind of be that sounding board for you and help you chart your path towards a successful military to civilian transition. It really can be a very stressful time. Let us be there for you. Ms. Devlin, uh, we know you're very busy right now dealing with everything. Uh, we would like to thank you for your time and joining us on our inaugural transition talk. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, for everybody uh, that has joined us, I, I would like to, uh, to reiterate Ms. Devlin's point. If you come into a situation, uh, call us. Just reach out to VA. Our website is on the bottom of the screen. It's the trusted go-to source for anything at VA. Come to us. Uh, there's going to be a lot of rumors and a lot of uncertain information out there. www.va.gov is your source for trusted information on VA. But again, please call us, reach out, and good luck to you and your family.